If you are firing either all high explosive or all armor piercing rounds from your battleships, main battery guns, and World of Warships legends, I will show you a better way to score more damage and kills and improve your overall chance of winning games. The Iron Duke in our featured game is British, which many folks shoot all HE out of because British HE is really great. It does have a high fire chance, but you'll soon see how well both of her shell types can work in this game when matched up with a specific tactical need. So as we roll through the action, we'll call out key tactical decision points related to gunnery as we go along. As we push forward a bit in our initial deployment, we might first consider whether it matters what shell type we load for our opening salvo. On average, high explosive or HE is a good opening shell choice in a battleship, as you will normally be firing at either bow-in battleships or cruisers or thin-skinned destroyers who get spotted first. And in this particular game, we look like Nostradamus, as I have HE loaded when we spot our first customer, a broadside Farragut. Now because they explode on contact, HE shells have three benefits against destroyers. They will not overpen, which is code for going straight through the hole and doing minimal damage. They take a lot of hit points from and or knock out key ship modules like steering, guns, torpedoes, and other parts of the ship. And when fired from battleship main guns, they have a healthy chance of starting a fire. The Farragut keeps driving broadside to us. For the love of God, man, make a turn or slow down or speed up in a continuous and straight line, which makes it a much easier firing solution for us. And yes, even in a battleship, you want to shoot at destroyers closer than 12 kilometers or so, just because they're an extremely high priority target. On our third salvo, when the Farragut finally gets near the security of some island shelter, we blap him for our first kill. Next up, as we spot a Japanese cruiser coming out of smoke at close range, we highlight our second tactical point, that it often makes sense to fire what shell type is loaded, even if it's not the optimal choice, as we don't want to waste the chance to take out a target of opportunity. In this case, with a full broadside for Ataka at 8 kilometers, I'd probably prefer armor piercing to get a chance for big citadel hits and possibly a dev strike but high explosive is already loaded, so we go with that first and get a decent bite of damage. Then, for the next shot, even though it will take a little longer to switch, we load armor piercing as we turn out to avoid the torpedoes we know are likely to come when a Japanese cruiser shows us their broadside. On the second salvo, we unfortunately get three overpens, which reduces damage per shell because they pass through the skinny hull armor without exploding. But then Furataka makes a huge mistake in peeking right back out from cover, both slow and showing full side again. And we land a second salvo with AP with just two full penetrations, but one is a citadel hit so we inflict a whopping 12,800 damage. We acquire a new target across the map and for point number three, we will always prioritize firing AP at broadside battleships within 15 kilometers. Fortunately, armor piercing is already loading as we measure up this broadside Iron Duke. We aim slightly above the waterline with a midship lead, and dispersion being what it is, we only get 3,000 of damage on the first salvo. But we do manage to finish off the Duke with a second salvo, just like the Farragut right before they get to safety. Our mountain symbol stayed off just long enough for us to know that there are some of our shells that would get to the target, and we get that second kill. All right, now we come about to return to the center of the map and assess the speed and angle of another approaching battleship. This time a Kaiser who unfortunately for them doesn't realize that we're starting to get on a roll. We aim the first salvo of AP, which is already loaded at their superstructure and score a pretty good 8,000 damage hit. And then as we think about our next shot, we highlight the fact that we will fire HE at angled battleships. As armor piercing loses penetration power as range of the target increases or the approach angle of the enemy ship gets more extreme. However, the Kaiser does not turn bow into us like we expected. We do only 5,000 of damage with the HE salvo, but we do set a fire. 
Just as we're thinking about switching back to armor piercing to deliver a bigger blow while the Kaiser is still broadside, a Mutsuki appears aft of us and appears to be giving chase, so we'll stick with HE for now. As with the Farragut, the first salvo on the Mutsuki takes an engine and about one third of their health, so they smoke up to conceal themselves. But even as the destroyer disappears, we stay with HE even on a broadside battleship because the destroyer remains a continuing threat. We do kite or angle away from the destroyer and set the Kaiser back on fire with our next salvo. And then we're completely surprised to get a pot shot at the enemy carrier coming middle with either a death wish or just a distinct lack of how the new autopilot feature works. But we have to let the carrier go as the Mutsuki is still stalking us and we barely dodge a torpedo. Our own carrier detects the destroyer with his planes though, giving us the spotting that we need to finish off the destroyer with a HE Alpha Strike and then the world's shortest fire to get kill number three. After we finish off the destroyer, our friendly Furutaka from the beginning of the game is back to say hello. He does not have torpedo angles on us and is way too close. So he gets to demo how HE can be used effectively on bow in targets. Not gonna lie, we feel a little bit dirty as we get two HE Citadel hits, which score less damage than with AP, but nonetheless nearly kill him and do disable his engine because he's so close. HE is also a sure thing for finishing off a low health target like this, so we keep it loaded and give it one more go on the Furutaka. But like a game in Arena Season 2, we lose the kill before we are able to fire. Alright, the action has been thick, and we get a little bit of a pause, so we decide to stick with high explosive to use on the thin skin carrier that we expect to be lurking somewhere in the middle now at relatively close range. And as we head middle, we send a parting gift to the Kaiser and set him on fire one more time to boost our total up to 9 showing us how British Battleship High Explosive has a very high fire chance and is also great for executing your fire setting missions. As we come around the corner, we do spot the Wayward CV, but we have really slow turrets. We finally get a shot off and take out the CV with High Explosive, the tactic we just missed using on the Furutaka for our fourth kill. And finally, the weakened Kaiser is all that's left and is back for one last hurrah. So we load armor piercing to finish him off given that he seems to be relatively broadside to us behind his island cover. At close ranges, you can penetrate battleship belt armor with battleship armor piercing rounds. One final shot, one kill for five in total and the Kraken unleashed. So how did we do? This game stayed relatively close all the way through and we got to be a difference maker. A quick summary of some damage calculations done by hand in a spreadsheet. Can we please Wargaming get some detailed post-match stats? Shows that we racked up just over 41,000 damage from HE salvos for about 44% of our total damage, two kills and two citadel hits. Just over 34,600 damage from AP salvos in some large chunks for 37% of our total damage and two kills with one citadel hit. And lastly, fire singed our enemies for almost 19,000 additional damage, about 20% of our total, and securing a kill on the pursuing Mutsuki. Yes, we grabbed a Kraken Unleashed, a high caliber, and a fireproof medal along with our top finish. But more importantly, we had balance in our ammo choices that drove those results to the maximum benefit of our team and our own score. And now I hope we can see that even a British battleship can do great work with armor piercing when the situation calls for it. It's a myth that you should always fire HE, even though it is a relatively easy way to get damage. So the key is, constantly assess your ammo type by the situation and targets you are facing as active ammo type switching will make you a more effective and far more dangerous battleship player overall. Well, now that our Iron Duke's colonization efforts are complete, we head off to the showers to get clean and invite you to stay tuned for another World of Warships Legends battleship video linked in the corner above. And while you're here, don't forget to check out our growing library of content on our YouTube channel, 
or to join us for a live stream here on YouTube or on Twitch. I hereby wish you only the very best luck and results with RNG in all of your battleship brawls. This is Van Kraken, and I am out.